Hello, so we have reached the fourth session in our Armour of God series so far and last time we looked at the breastplate of righteousness and we need to make sure that we are wearing uh, God's righteousness and not our own. And this time we are on to the shoes that comes from the gospel of peace. Ephesians 6 verse 15 says this, For shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. Just a little story about preparation. Um, James loves to tell the story about a time when he went climbing with a group of friends in Snowdonia. And there were, they were young, in the early 20s, a bit reckless, a uh, bit free-spirited. And um, one of the guys turned up for the climb. He'd never been climbing before. And um, he turned up in um, really thin tracksuit bottoms and really cheap, flimsy shoes. And, th and this is the best one. He turned up without a coat. So they were going to be climbing up these snowy, cold hills, slippery ledges. Um, and this guy had no coat. So, but they they proceeded anyway. And um, this, this poor guy, I think there was many times when he nearly fell off a ledge. And he slipped over. Um, in, he was absolutely freezing cold, but I think that God just kept them safe because they returned intact and alive. But I, th I think um, the guy in question was, was one of our, our friends and I don't think he ever went climbing again after that. But that's just a little story about how, how to be prepared um, is really important and shoes are an incredibly important part of a protective kit because they keep you, you keep your feet uh, warm, dry, protected, um, they keep them supported, they stop you from slipping over um, and you get the idea, shoes are important and we need to wear the right shoes for the right occasion. We need to be able to walk in God's peace, in his shoes of peace. At this particular moment, that is absolutely essential, that we are walking through the days, through the weeks, through the months, in the shoes of God's peace. Peace is what will make Christians stand out from those without hope. But this is a different sort of peace than the, so the inner peace that the world searches for. This peace doesn't come from mindfulness meditations or breathing exercises, all which have their place. But this peace comes from, it says, the good news the Gospels of peace. This passage tells us that peace comes from the knowledge of the good news. So what is the good news? Well, of course, it's the truth that Jesus has defeated the power of death on the cross. And even in death, there is hope and victory. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 55 says this, where, O oh death, is your victory? But there is so much more attached to the good news of Jesus, isn't there? We are made right with God forever. We are, we are loved so much that Jesus died for us. We have access to the presence of God through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is bringing out good fruits in our character. We're adopted into, our, into a family. All these things are bits of 
good news that comes from the gospel. In a world full of so much bad news and no hope, we need to re revisit these pieces of God's good news regularly. If you feel the news is getting you down, spend time declaring this good news. All the good news that God has shown you over the course of your life. And as you declare each statement, believe them, trust in them, and allow them to fill you up with God's peace, knowing that he is in control. The peace of God is not just for us to enjoy. We need to have it to share with others too. If we're walking in the peace of God's good news, we are then able to minister that to our friends and our neighbours. The Passion Version, I was reading the Passion Version of this passage and just as an aside it's always a really good practice to read a passage in as many different versions as you can so you get a broader picture of of the meaning of that passage and Bible Gateway is a great way to do that so the passion version says this Ephesians 6 verse 15 stand on your feet alert then you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace. I'm reading a Lisa Bevere book at the moment called Without Rival. And there's one line in the book that I think is incredibly powerful and important. And I felt to share it in this video. And it's this, she says, something unique has been entrusted to you. You have a special brand of good news to share with the world. You have a special way of delivering the good news, a unique way. And that is God's perfect design. You've got a unique message, a unique way of delivering that message. So what do I mean by that? Well, for example, over the course of your life, God will have spoken to you as you've walked with Jesus and revealed to you parts of his good news. And that is part of your message, your unique life song. For example, um, when I was in school, uh, I wasn't picked really for things, particularly sort of sports teams. And I know, shock horror, I know you'll be shocked by that revelation but um, yeah so I was never sort of picked for things like that and one of the most precious um, messages of good news that God shared with me in his word was from John 15 6 which was that verse I you did not choose me but I chose you and that beautiful piece of God, good news that God chose me was so important in my life and now that is part of my unique message. I like to share with people that they're chosen, that they're loved, that they're valued, that God chooses them. That is part of the good news that I can share. What has God given to you? What unique pieces of good news has he given to you over the course of your life that you can bring, that you can share. And when we share the good news of Jesus, it brings the fruit of peace. It brings peace to others. And just as we close, it's important to say this, that trust is a key aspect of peace. We need to trust that the one who made us and formed us in the womb is faithful to care for us in any season. Let's just pray. Just present 
all your thoughts and cares to him right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you care for us, that you love us and that you are for us. I thank you for the good news that you have shared with us. Thank you for the good news that you have conquered death. But we also thank you for all the other aspects of knowing you and the good news that brings. And I pray that you would help us to meditate on good news, on all the good news that you have given to us. I pray that that would bring about the fruit of peace and that we would be able to walk in your peace. Lord, I pray that you would give us good news to share with others, that you would give us wisdom as to know what to say to the right person. Lord, that you would use us as vehicles of sharing good news and bestowing peace on, on those around us. In Jesus' name, Amen. So we've got the three points to ponder. So first of all, something to think about at home. What causes me to lose my peace? What causes me to lose my peace? And as you mull over those things, make it a practice this week of casting those cares regularly into God's hands. Secondly, um, something to share. What good news has God revealed to you over the years? What good news has God revealed to you over the years? And how is that part of your life's message? Just share that with perhaps um, members of your household or on your, on your uh, connect groups. And finally, something to study. I encourage you to read Psalm 4 verse 8 before you go to sleep at night and to meditate on what Jesus says about himself which is recorded prophetically in Isaiah 61 verse 1. So Isaiah 61 verse 1 and this is where Jesus talks about all the aspects of the good news that he brings. I hope you have a blessed week and see you soon.